Watch that float. That's a good one. So I'm back at the breakwater. I've got my pal Joe with me. Um, just here now. Beautiful place, beautiful place. Spent half my life here. Um, we're targeting the wrasse, however, we have got stuff for a big fish rod, we got conga rod, we got some mackerel baits, and um, we're just gonna see what comes along. So, this is us. We were like, just past the first bend, but not quiet to the second bend. Um, still a bit shallow yet, to be honest. The only thing we've set up this way. Is that jellyfish? Aren't they so majestic? So it's a little bit shallow to put the conga rod out yet, and to be fair, it's a bit shallow to float fish in the margin. We're still four hours before I, if you look, you can see the bottom. But I'm just planning where I'm gonna put my conga rod, and uh, as people know, the congas will hide in the holes in the walls. And I've just looked down there. I don't know if you can pick it up. There seems to be a massive crack down in there, and then there seems to be an hole under there. So I'm gonna drop my conga rod right in between them both. Now, I don't know if that's gonna work, that's just me being fussy looking at spots but from what I can see I can see a gap there and a gap there so it's going to be dropped there on the off chance there is a conger in one of them and when he comes out later that rod's going to go diggity dink 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 <laughs> bait choice for today load of old bait I've got to get used up we've got some of these raw headless prawns ideal for the bass and the smoothies should they be here which they have been being caught from here got a load of this rag from roast tackle and bait which I'm going to wrap up now and get out the sun but the loads of little ones we've got to use all these up small prawns there um, and a bit of mackerel we're just using it up um, the water's slowly filling up now I'm going to chuck this big fish rod out put a bell on it and just leave it we'll alternate from prawns to um, mackerel on here it's just a massive pulley rig onto half a mackerel and obviously if you catch a fish you'll pull the lead up to there so the lead's nowhere near the bottom and uh, that bait. And we're just going to be flicking around. The water is getting a little bit deeper now. I've only took about 20 minutes, half hour, setting up and doing bits. You really can't see the bottom that much already. So I'm going to sling this big one out and then I'm going to get the float rod in. Don't really want to send it too far. You can see where it drops off. I only want to be rocking this around around 20 meters. It's just a little. It's not comfortable. Yeah, that's it. I don't really want to move it. That's more than enough, right? It's still dropping. Still dropping. Still dropping, just at the bottom. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna put 40 foot on that. It was dropping for ages and it's got a six ounce lead on. And I'm gonna use my noodle, wrap up tight, so it won't go nowhere. And I'm gonna kind of forget about this and just wait for the bell to start dinging. So all the big rods in, I'm gonna set the float rod up. You can tell I was a carpet. <laughs> These are my, now my new sea fishing um, lure rods and float rods. Little 6,000 Shimano bait runners on the Nash Dwarfs that extend. That is now, my lure setup and my float setup for sea fishing. <laughs> so I've given the course fishing up. I've seen the light. <laughs> Obviously, if you're using coarse gear in the sea, always wash your gear down because uh, the salt will just totally balls up the reel, like the salt and that in the water, it'll corrode it. So always wash it down. These rods, little Nash Dwarfs, pull out to there. Drop that on. That's a cracking little float fishing rod for Rast that. So this is what I'm fishing on the float rod. It's a normal float. A couple of BB shot there and a couple there to stop it sliding. And then the weight. I'm fishing about eight foot. So we've got about eight foot of line. You've got an SSG shot there and you've got the up there, which is gonna have little bits of rag on. I was fishing a size six carp hook last time and I was losing, a, well not losing fish, I was missing a lot of fish because I think there's a lot of smaller wrasse in there. So I've dropped down to a little size eight now. Or is it a size 10? I think it's a size 10, a little 10 J hook. So a smaller hook with smaller worms, we should it more. Uh, what I'm gonna do first though, that rod with a mackerel on has been in about, it's gotta have been in 45 minutes now. So we're gonna get that in and have a little check at it. Check that out, see what's happened. And um, then we'll start the float fishing. You know you're up against it when the crabs don't touch it, yeah? yeah. Oh, there's a perfect bait. It's been out there a good 45 minutes, not even been touched, which is good that the crabs aren't touching it, to be fair, but I think well, not even a crab or a dogfish out there. All right, we'll send this back out and we'll start float fishing. It's not looking good, is it? Basha! Woo! 
Well, that was the first drop with the float. I said I wasn't feeling it. I'll just try some float fishing. The float was in the water all of five seconds. He's just gone, boom, buried. So I'm going to set the tripod up and the camera up so you can actually see the float. Uh, that float just disappeared about four foot under the water on that worm instantly. Um, confidence is sky high now. It's going to happen. Uh, watch that float, Joe. Woohoo! Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 the nibbling. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, fish on. It's a little ras, is it? It's a little ras. Absolutely amazing looking fish. I get him back and uh, we'll go again. Fish on. That's got to be the smallest ras in the breakwater. Absolute stunners, aren't they? They are. Lovely looking fish, to be fair. Absolutely lovely looking fish. Right, let's get him back and go again. Another small one. I think I'm gonna have to go stalking some, you know. Lovely fish, absolutely stunning fish. I think I'm gonna um, take one rod, get the big rod in now that's out, take my little float rod and I'm gonna have a stalk up and down this wall, up and down there, and try and land on a big one. Cause so I'm just getting little bites here and little fish. Right, I'm stalking, I'm gonna have 10 minutes here, then move another 20 meters, I have 10 minutes there, until I get to the end of the break wall and back. Um, and just hope I can drop lucky and land it on one. Um, I've had, I don't know, probably five or six little rats from there now, and I've had about 40 bites. <laughs> it's just, they're all little ones. So I'm gonna try and get lucky and try and drop on one. Rats on. Okay, it's a tiny one, but it's still the best one of the night. We'll have another five minutes here, then move up again. Beautiful fish. But it's not the big one, we will keep going, we will keep going. There seem to be better bites up here. That's a better one. It's not massive, but it's a better one. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. They're getting bigger. As I say, it's not the monster I'm after this one, but they are getting bigger. It's an absolutely stunning fish, isn't it? They're getting bigger. Right, let's get this one back and we'll move up another 10 or 15 metre and we'll go again. They're getting a bit bigger, but um, not necessarily the one I'm after. They are getting a bit bigger though, so you know, if things carry on as they are, maybe in another seven hours time, I'll have one what I want. <laughs> Tidy bite that. That's good living life, ain't it? Fair play, lads. And the boat as well. Oh, I'd love to be out there now. <laughs> Go on, boys. Right, meanwhile, I'm struggling on the rafts. Um, they've been getting bigger. I'm gonna go up to the set of steps up there now. I'm gonna have 10 or 15 minutes there. And then I'm gonna go back to where I started, drop the conga rod back up in the side, because we're only about an hour off high water now. It's about seven o'clock. Bloody hell, that was a proper bite. It's a better one again, better one again. This is a baby, it's still a baby. There's no denying it's a tiny one, but they're getting bigger. And the bite just before this was a cracking bite. Um, I want one of these, probably twice as long and about five times as heavy. So 
So I'm just on my way to base camp now to go and see Joe, see how he's getting on. Um, to give you an idea of the size of the rats that I'd like to catch, here's a few pictures off Google. And these are true specimens. They are specimens, like they don't come along very often. But I'd like to get one like this size, what you're seeing now, and this size, and that size, and this size. I keep getting the small ones. As I've said in previous videos, the big grass is the one that eludes me. I've um, I've had I've had big smoothies, I've had big bullos, I've had big bass, I've had congas, I've had you know, I've only been sea fishing a couple of years. I'm fairly new to it. I was a carp and catfish angler. Obviously, when you know how to catch one fish, your rigs, your knots, your gear, and your fish care, and all that sort of moves over. So that sort of helped with my sea fishing. But uh, a big ras has just been—it's been elusive for me. But I'll keep going, keep giving hundred percent. You know that. One thing you get from me is one hundred. Never give up. <laughs> but yeah, I'm back on base camp now. It's conga time. So what I'm going to do with this, basically, I'll put a I'll put it on a running rig now. Obviously the fish will just pull straight through, it's on a runner. That's the bait. Nice big chunk of mackerel. I know where the holes are here, I seen them earlier. Um, so we're going to get this in and then we're going to get on the float for some wrasse as well. Um, just keep trying. If it happens, it happens, don't it? That's the conga rod there, down in the margin. Um, hopefully that's just going to go bomb bomb. We'll have a big massive conga, but I can't see it. But you just never know. And we're going to float fish for these wrasse. I've started using bigger baits now. I've upped the upsize one as well. The hook is a little bit bigger. And I've been putting two or three worms on, so, you know, I want the big one. Um, the little ones will just pull at it and I'll miss the bites. It's the big one I'm after now. It's uh, all guns blazing out for the big one, yeah? Bite on this one. My hat like that because the sun's in my eye. I heard that bell then. Well, then. Imagine it. Big five foot long conga. I'm rashed off. <laughs> That could be a conga mouth in it. Congas tend to mouth it. They'll sit there, chewing on it before they swallow it. Oh, please, come on. This one very wriggly. I've got faith in this one. That's a good one. I told you I had faith in that bait. Oh, sugar. That's a good rasp. I knew that bait was the one. Come on, then. <laughs> yes. It's not massive, but it's still my biggest one ever. To be fair, it's a decent one, that. I'm buzzing with that. They're getting bigger. Still not the monster, but um, they're definitely getting bigger. Look at that. Um, can't be far away, can it? That big one. Can't be. Let's have a look at the other side of this. Keep hold of him. Out for a specimen. Stunning, aren't they? 
Right, the big one can't be far away. Let's get this back. Still not the monster I'm after, but I mean, come on. What an absolute diamond that is, really. Come on. <laughs> right, let's get this back nice and carefully. Nice and carefully. He's an absolute stunner of a fish, he is. Absolute diamond of a fish. Got to watch the spikes on them as well. So when you do grip them, put your thumb down, squash them like that. Oh, I'm well happy with that one. Give him some time. There he goes. Yes. Yes. Right. I'm hoping that conga rod goes off now. It's going all right. Everything's come into plan. The rats are getting bigger. We've had a bite on the conga rod. Um, maybe it could be written in the stars. <laughs> Right, let's see what's happening on that uh, conga rod then. I've literally just put that big ras back. Well, I would say big ras. It's big for what I've been having. It's not a big ras. It's a small ras, but it's big for what I've been catching. Um, we'll check this mackerel base for the conga. Regroup, put it back in, and then we get back on the float for the arasia. See, that was dropped right in front of me, yeah? There's a fish on. There's a fish on, there's a fish on. Fish on. Oh. I thought that was a snag. Hands down, I thought it was a snag. I was holding the rod, it's gone bang, bang. That's a conga, took it into the rock. Oh. Honestly, at first I thought it was a snag. You can see where the line's been fried there, look. That was a conger on. Oh, this, this trip's gonna be made, right. I'm gonna get this back out. Honestly, look, there's no signs of crabs or nothing. That was a conger on. You have my hand on art. That rod was, I thought it was a snag at first. I was holding it, it was going bump, bump, bump. I could feel it clear as anything. It, it wasn't even a little fish, it was proper tugging. Oh. Right, come on then. Come on, let's get it back in. Let's get it back in. I honestly thought, I honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was a snag. And then I was like, how, how come that's in a snag? I only dropped it in. Why is it snagged? I dropped it like right there. And then as I was holding it, it's gone dump, 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 dump. Oh. I've said this before here, like when you get conga bites like that, Joe, yeah? As soon as you get the first little dink, hit them, hit them and hit them hard because they, they'll pick it up and they'll just drop back into the snags. And that's exactly what's just happened there. When I had them few little dinks earlier, I should have hit it. Conga bites are different. They're not like bass or smoothies or bolos or any oh, other very, type. Very light, mate. Any other type of fish, you get a few little taps. And then if you're not there and you have them, they're, they're back in the wall. Like, like I'm starting to think now. When I'm when I'm fishing for congas, any little um, any little any little tap, whether it be just a little dink, just hit it because I don't know. Still learning myself. Still learning, but I reckon if I'd have hit that earlier, that's definitely something took me in the ball. Oh, and I felt it. I felt it kicking. Come on, Johnny boy. Uh, look, it's sharp as you like. Right, I'm going to drop that strike back in. Oh, it's getting exciting now. It's getting very exciting, people. It's getting very exciting. It's getting very exciting, people. Yeah, that little bite, I'm pretty certain it was a con guy. even said on the video, they're probably just mouthing it. So what he's done is he's mouthed it. And because the lead could be there, then you've, I've got that much slack. He could have picked that fish up like that, then moved off into the rock, and then I've just got that little bit of a twitch. What I might do, if it happens again, I'll uh, shorten the rig to about that long. Upon watching the video back, I've realised a mistake. I was dropping the rig tight up against the wall and the uplink was about four foot long, meaning the fish could take four foot a line before any bite indication, which was just enough for it to get in the wall. Still got it, you know. <laughs>
So when I was spotted Rod saying these are the little taps, this is what conkers do. Little did I know then what, what looks like now is there was one actually like backing up into the rocks with the bait. So next time I'll be dropping the lead about two or three foot away from the wall with a hook length of around one and a half to two foot so I'll get indication before the fish takes off into the wall. But that's just fishing, learning how you go wrong and putting it right for next time. You can tell the water's dropping now. I've been looking at a mark on that rock. It's lost about that much in the last 20 minutes, so we ain't got long now to be fair. But it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. You know what? Let's have a little bit of a laugh. What's that? Fucking lob it out. I was just thinking that. I've just said on the video I don't want to lob it out because you, you're going to probably get doggies, but. Yeah, but I've only got tiny bait up, so I'll be lucky for whitey. <laughs> You know what? If he's loving it out, I'm loving it out. To be fair, I don't even want to send it that far. Just 20, 30 meters, just a little loop like that. Still dropping, still dropping, still dropping, still dropping, still dropping, still dropping. Just hit the floor. <laughs> I love how deep this place is out there. Right, let's get belt on. Get belt on, Rod. See what comes along, guy. Eh? Go. Go. Go, Joe, 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 Joe. <laughs> oh, his bell's ringing. Oh! Go with you, that's a little waiting. Watch it be a big grass after all that now. Come, Joe. <laughs> I'll be throwing you in if that's a big grass. <laughs> like a dog, you mate, if you have to be on it. No, waiting. Is it? Do that, we're coming. <laughs> what do you do to fish the fish? You called it though, mate. That's a cracking live bite to put out. Yeah, struggling a bit. I've, uh, it's getting dark now. To be fair, we weren't supposed to be here this long. Um, we are supposed to have a couple hours on the ras. Just drop a conga rod in while we was on the ras, then get off. Um, I probably should have been home an hour ago on the drive homes. <laughs> an hour long, so I'm already two hours late. And it's 20, 30 minutes walk back to the car. So that's two and a half hours late. <laughs> but uh, sometimes you just got to fish on it, yeah. As I say, it's all about effort. Um, what an evening, though. Can't believe how calm it is here. Let's have a look at this round here. The moon round there. Something else in it. Somebody tell us what this is going across the current. Try and zoom in. What the hell? It's quite a way out. It's definitely fighting the current. Look, you can see some like trail behind it. God, what's that? There's more of it under the water, Joe. You can see the ripples it's making, yeah? What the hell is that? It's just like a... I don't, you can see the body coming to the right of it. You can see the shadow under the water, yeah? Probably a feel then, mate. It could be, mate. It's weird, isn't it? Who the hell is that, man? <laughs> it's got me baffled. Well, I think that's it. This bait, like, it's been, it's weird what's been happening today. Like, last time we was fishing fishy baits here, when I was here with Mike, we was having, like, a bite every five minutes. Now, I had that mackerel in earlier, half a mackerel. It was in there nearly an hour. The crabs didn't touch it. Now, this one's been out there. 
about it's got to be half an hour 45 minutes and i almost know that it's probably not been touched look at that <laughs> there's not even any crabs let's have a look at this now if, if you could go back a couple of weeks when me and mike was here that would be bending over within seconds um there's no crabs there's no current it's flat calm there's no nothing it's just it's just one of them nights it's weird it's just weird <laughs> that's all it is weird uh i've had a few wrasse joe's had a white in i believe i lost the conga it was definitely a fish on that took me in the rocks i think it can only be a conga or a little strap but uh yeah that hook is that sharp look just like it just you know i've been out there half an hour in hollyhead breakwater now anybody knows that would normally get snuffled up by a dogfish within seconds the crabs would smash it there's nothing so we're going to be signing out now wasn't the best of session i ain't going to blow smoke up your ass and say oh this was the best this was that i didn't get the big grass even though we got a couple of decent one and that was getting bigger uh, we didn't get the conga even though i believe i had one on um we shouldn't even be here this late i should have been home by now as i say but um it is what it is don't forget to hit that like rate comment and subscribe and uh I'll see you all in the next one. I'm going to work out why nobody has been eating my fish. <laughs> see you all in the next show, people, yeah? Peace out.